Hi and welcome to this lesson where we are learning about the chess pawn. Okay, now the pawn is the smallest piece in our chess army. However, we start with eight of them in the beginning of the game. They actually fill the whole of the second rank for white. For black, they fill the seventh rank. This is called the starting position because obviously that's where the pawns start the chess game. Now every piece in our army can do two things. It can move and it can attack. The pawn is the only piece that moves and attacks in a different way. The pawn only moves straight forward and he only moves one square at a time. Now since for white forward means in this direction, this pawn can only move one square forward. In other words, to this square. Now, a pawn attacks diagonally and also only one square. That means this pawn attacks diagonally one square, in other words, this and that square. A pawn can attack two squares at the same time, but only move one square forward. There is only one exception to the way pawns move, and that is that when a pawn has not moved at all during the game, in other words, he is still on his starting position, he has the option of moving one or two squares. Since none of these pawns have moved yet, they can move one or two squares. Something that I haven't mentioned yet is that white always starts a chess game. So it's white's turn to move, and since this pawn hasn't moved, he can move one or two squares. Let's Imagine him moving two squares. It is Black's turn to move. He can move one or two squares of any of the pawns that he hasn't moved yet. Since this pawn hasn't moved yet, it can move one or two squares. Let's imagine him moving two squares. Now you'll notice something very curious. Pawns cannot attack forward. They only move forward, which means that this white pawn cannot capture the black pawn. He's only attacking diagonally one square, diagonally one square. There's no pieces standing on that square, so he is not allowed to move to those squares. He's also not allowed to move forward because someone is already occupying that square. That means the white pawn is blocked. It cannot move. The same goes for the black pawn. Since forward for black is in this direction, this pawn cannot move. There's someone blocking his path. So white is going to have to move something else. Let's imagine he moves this pawn only one square. It's black's turn. Let's say he moves here. It's white's turn to move again and he moves the pawn on d2 to d4. Now you notice that this black pawn is attacking this square and this square. Since one of the white pieces is standing on the square that the black pawn is attacking, he can capture the white pawn. We capture by taking our piece and replacing the piece that's standing on the square that we are attacking. Do you notice how white can also capture a black piece? Notice how this pawn is attacking this square and this square. Since one of the black pieces is standing on a square that the white pawn is attacking, he can capture it. Again, we capture by replacing that piece and taking it off the board. Let's go back a few moves because something curious has happened. Do you notice how black captured a piece and then white captured a piece? That means black lost the pawn and white lost the pawn, or in other words, black one a pawn and white one a pawn. This is called exchanging pawns or trading. No one really has an advantage yet since black has seven pawns and white has the seven pawns. Let's look at a few more moves. The pawn on e4 moves to e5 and again we see that the black pawn is attacking the white pawn. But notice something else as well. The white pawn on d4 is also attacking the square e5, where the other white pawn is standing on. 
What that simply means is that if the black captures that white piece, white will be able to recapture the black piece. In chess, we say that the pawn on e5 is defended. So that when the pawn moves to e5 and he is captured, the piece that captured us can be recaptured. In chess, it's very important that we keep all of our pieces defended. In other words, try and make sure that all of your pieces are standing on squares. If it was white's turn to move, can you see how you can defend the pawn on e5? In other words, move one of your pawns to attack the square e5. Exactly. If we take f2 and move it to f4, this pawn is attacking the square that the white pawn is standing on. That means that pawn is defended. If it will be captured, we can recapture the piece that attacked us. Now there is still a lot more that we can learn about the pawns, but that will be in another lesson. For now you know enough to play pawn soccer. This is how pawn soccer works. The aim of the game is to try and get your pawns to the other side of the chessboard. In other words, each pawn represents a soccer ball. Your opponent's back rank counts as the goalposts. If you can get your pawn to the other side of the chessboard and they can stay there for one turn, you score a goal. The person with the most goals in the end wins. I hope you enjoy playing a game of pawn soccer against one of your friends. Good luck.